Okay, so in this one we're going to take a look at um, some of the new filters. And I'll just initialize this preset. Um, so we've got a bunch of new filters. Um, we've got a few more bandpass. Um, the bandpasses we had before, we had I think we had the vintage ones before. And now we've added the two-pole um, ones and the saturated ones. Uh, again, they're sort of a bit lighter on par, so if you're just sort of wanting more functional filters, um, bandpass ones, then these are really handy. Although they do still sound great, so um, they just don't have some of the non-linear characteristics of the, the four-pole vintage. Um, and uh, so I'll let you hear them. So nice filters, um, and then we've got a saturated version. Sounds quite similar, but it just has that sort of edge of saturation as you come down the, the spectrum. Very cool. And then we have um, low pass and drive. So this is basically, I'll actually need a different sound here. I'll go for maybe a triangle. So what we've got, um, let me try. Okay. What will actually do, I'll feed a filter into this. Actually works better when you feed some sort of resonance into it. So I'll create just a basic sort of acidy sound. So we've got a basic acidy sound, and that's being fed into our um, low pass pass drive. And what this basically is, the low pass is a standard low pass filter. With no resonance on it. And the drive part is where we use the resonance. So this is actually basically a distortion built into the filter. So it just gives you another area where you can sort of um, load up on distortion if you want to make aggressive acid sounds or whatever, you've got that option. And if you want to go even further, we've got an LP with distortion, which is again even more aggressive. And then we have um, our all pass and our comb. So I'll let you hear the comb. I'll turn this off for the meantime. And the comb uh, is just a. Uh, it's sort of called a comb because if you think of how a comb looks, um, all the frequencies are sort of like jagged. So you've, you'll have a frequency, then a space, then a frequency, then a space. Um, I think you get this through sort of phase phasing and stuff like that. So. <laughs> Create some cool sounds with it. So a very cool filter. And then another one along the same sort of lines. We have an all pass. So another very cool filter. And then we have our sort of standard format filters and they're unchanged from the previous version. Um, so next up we have um, the GM. And the GM has um, sort of a new feature. We've got sync. So really handy now for um, creating sort of syncable stuff. Uh, if we turn this to filter cutoff, turn this to just a two pole. You can sync that then up to, you can see there in your control info, 
So again, just gives you more control, enables you to create some sort of good dubstep stuff. So you can sort of sync that GM up and um, align it with your track. So that's a, another cool feature. And then we've got our EQ. So this section's been changed a bit from the previous Anna. We got some of the um, less useful controls um, on the preview. Uh, so I'll pick a... So preview now is just a button. It's also host sync now, so. Um, which just makes it easier to sort of um, try stuff along with your uh, chin. So if you just wanted to hit preview and then just sort of browse through your, your presets, that's a, an easy way to sort of find something you want. So again, just really handy function. We just simplified it, made it more useful. And then we have um, an EQ section. So we added this, it was just annoying me. It was sort of hard to get um, some of the presets to sound the way I wanted. And we just added a, a very basic EQ, three band EQ. Um, and it sounds good, it sounds very good actually. So you can do loads with that. And then we have a bypass. So very handy feature, very simple again, but um, really, really useful. And then we have on top of that, we've added a uh, new reverb al algorithm. So we scrapped the old one, just didn't like it. It wasn't really... Um, doing much for us so we got this new one it's developed by Michael Olson it's incredibly cool um, it's based off a sort of lexicon style um, vintage plate much smoother much warmer um, really works on sort of bigger uh, riff sounds, so we'll get some lead sound. You can really hear the sort of richness, the depth, a lot more space. Everything about it's just ten times better than the previous one we had. We've also added a bit of different functionality around the sort of dry and wet levels. Previously, we had a a sort of um, just a wet dry mix and I find it was sort of very difficult to sort of um if you wanted to add, take reverb on or or take it off that when you change when you sort of click reverb on or off it was changing the sound too much so we've sort of changed the way it operates very slightly um and now you've got sort of just a level button <laughs> mm. so it's more like a send and return now um, rather than a, a sort of insert effect. And then if you do want to go fully wet, you can actually turn the dry signal off. So we can click that button and it'll turn the dry signal off. So you're only getting the reverb. And that works for the delay as well. So on the delay, if you wanted to create like a sort of super wide sound, you know, using your delays. You can sort of have a fully wet sound. So, again, another handy feature. Um, just sort of tidies that section up a bit. And then we've got um, our rooting. So rooting's really important for sort of creating um, sort of more complex sounds. And we've added a, a lot more facilities for rooting in this version. 
Um, you can route to all the effects. So we can have uh, GM, LFOs, modulation sources, all controlling um, different parameters in, in our effects. So we can have phaser frequency, the distortion, delay times, reverb decay, all that kind of stuff. So um, again, it just really helps if you want to tonally shape your sound over time. So for example, we could sweep the mid frequency of the EQ using the GM. Uh, let me reset the GM and we'll actually I'll just initialize the sign we'll do it just so you can hear more clearly EQ mid frequency That's just coming from the, the MIDI queue. So very handy. Um, we can then do stuff like assign the GM to, say, our phaser frequency. So turn our phaser on, turn our rate and our depth down. So again, a lot more control over um, the parameters. Again, if you wanted to create sort of those dubstepy basses with lots of modulation, it's a lot easier to do in this. Um, you know, combine that with a fil the new filters, and you can get some really cool sounds. Um, so that's handy. Also, we sort of updated the um, the mod wheel routing. Um, so we've got uh, just a more sort of solid version um, of mod wheel routing where uh, it sort of applies to the different um, functions uh, more as you would expect. Um, previously, you know, when you assigned it, if you had the modulation down to zero, it wouldn't go to zero and different we think. So we just tidied that whole section up um, and just to enable you to sort of create the more standard um, sort of pitch, pitch modulation and, and filter modulation that you would hear on, on any synth really. So just tidies it all up just makes it all more usable uh, more functional so really handy and then the sort of last area really would be um key mode um so we did a, a good bit of work here we've added polyphony restrict so this should help a lot with um, people having cpu problems one of the, one of the big problems we had in the last one we didn't have this um sort of intelligent note stealing really and um, what was happening was um, if you had a sort of uh, a long long release time and you kept, kept playing notes then they would just build up and build up and build up so now you can see that on the CPU if I turn the poly up to like something crazy like 32 if I keep hitting notes the CPU will just keep climbing up forever and ultimately that's why a lot of people were getting sort of lots of CPU overload issues um, so now we can restrict the, the polyphony to sort of sensible level so if you're playing a sort of 3 or 4 note co chord you can sort of restrict it to that have really long release times now and you're just not going to worry about the CPU load just creeping up and creeping up so that sorts a lot of that problems out and that was a big problem with us and a lot of reason why people were sort of reporting that uh, CPU was killing things especially on pads it was fine for basses and stuff which were just sort of single notes that didn't have long releases and stuff but for the strings and pads it really was a bit of an issue Um, so that's that sorted out and then the next thing we sort of added was we sort of updated our uh, portamento mode so now it's fully polyphonic um 
and we've got proper legato and slide mode so that's all sort of working and standardized I mean it's a pretty standard function on most synths um, our original version just wasn't really up to scratch so we sort of reworked it and it all works as expected and then this enables you to create sort of some of the we've got um, this type of portamento sort of pluck sound just turn it up a bit more so you can sort of hear it So we couldn't do that before, just with the way it was set up. So we've we've now sort of addressed all that, and the legato and slide modes work perfectly nice. So all completely cool. Um, so that's it for sort of all the new additions. Um, in the next video, I'll just take you through some of the presets from uh, the new preset bank that's going to be on sale uh, in the extra store.